Hello and welcome to this latest edition of our Top Tips for SMEs series with me, Philip King and Blue Chain. I'm delighted to introduce Ian Preston, who helps businesses deliver stunning sales performance, particularly through the use of LinkedIn. Ian, we're looking forward to hearing from you. Please tell us a bit more about you and how you help businesses and also give us your three top tips. Certainly. So just a brief bit of background. I was in the corporate world for 30 odd years, climbed the greasy pole from sales rep, sales manager, to sales director, got made redundant uh, twice and then set up my own business in 2014. Um, initially to do sales training. Um, that's a passion of mine. I've been in the sales world for many years and I've been training salespeople for over 30 years. So that seemed a good starting place. And then I quickly learned how to use LinkedIn more effectively as a marketing resource, as opposed to a place where people don't perceive me and hopefully recruiter will find them. So, so for the last eight years or so, I've spent a lot of my time um, you, showing people how to use LinkedIn more, more effectively as a marketing resource and then teaching people how to sell. Um, and so that's what I do. I, I, and as my coaching skills have developed, um, I now work with people around not only sales and marketing, but time management, vision, strategy, and that sort of stuff. So, yeah. Good. So tell us your three top tips, please. My three top tips are firstly around making your profile stand out from the crowd. Um, and we're going to look in, in, in a short while around how important the headline is. The headline is the bit at the top underneath your name. It shouldn't just be um, your job title and the company you work for because you want it to stand out. So in other words, uh, mine says, as you will see in a moment, mine says helping businesses generate more hot leads and sales. So if, and again, we're going to look at how to use the search function in a short while. So if you were searching for a LinkedIn trainer, for example, you will see 10 or 12 people on the page. And if you just get down the page and it says LinkedIn trainer, LinkedIn trainer, LinkedIn trainer, and you come to one that says helping business generate more hot leads and sales, LinkedIn trainer, LinkedIn trainer, who you're more likely to click on first. Uh, and if you need further evidence of that, how many how many emails a day do you delete on the subject title alone? So we're going to look at the importance of, of the headline of pulling people into your page as opposed to your competitors. We're also then going to look about the about section, used to be called the summary, now called the about section, where you can put the meat on the bones of what it says in the headline. And again, the, people, the, the, the problem that people have here, the mistake they make is they tell people what they do. We need to remember all the time that LinkedIn is a marketing resource and nobody gives two hoots what you do. They care passionately how we can help them. Can we save them money? Can we make them money? Can we save them more time? Can we get them more orders? So again, your out, uh, your about section needs to be full of what I call with and what's in it for me, for the reader. Um, so we'll certainly look at that. Um, so headline and about section is, is tip one. Um, tip two is about how to find, connect and engage with your ideal prospects. So we'll be looking at the search function, particularly how to use it to find those important people that, that, that will benefit you and your business. And then the third one is all around the use of posts and articles to be seen to be a thought leader in your marketplace, to be educational. Don't keep selling all the time. It's a game and make the stake that people make on LinkedIn. They try and sell to people all the time. And posts and articles are important in the way that it keeps your name in the frame, as we'll look at shortly. Um, so when people think of you or what need what you provide, they think of you first. Thank you, Ian. There are some great tips there. So we're now joined by Tim Annis, who is Chief Exec of Blue Chain, as we delve deeper into Ian's tips and learn a bit more. Thanks, Philip. Ian, it would be great if you could bring up your profile, tell us that, have a look at it. But your first tip was, was about making the profile stand out. And I know from looking at your profile recently, you've got lots of asterisks around your 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 name and your profile and stuff um and i'd like to understand more about that so please over to you yeah absolutely so he, here's my profile um when i do my speaking engagements and run workshops one of the first things i say to people is you as an audience tell me what you think of it um and, and in the main i get people saying good things they ask me questions about why i've done certain things i get the occasional person that says it's busy um but it is but then again why not use some of the great stuff that linkedin provides for you so what i want to pull out on this particular case is um, we're going to talk particularly about the about section and the headline 
Uh, but I just do want to just raise one extra thing, phone a little freebie. If you are not using this space, which is called a header, if it's blank on yours, you can see that you are missing a trick. So that's the first little extra bonus tip I'm going to give you. If you're not using it, go use it. Um, the first thing I want to talk about here in the first tip was all about making your profile stand out, particularly around the headline section. And this is the bit under here, under the name that we call the headline. For most people who are not um, regular users or not good users of LinkedIn, um, their profile will almost certainly say their job title and the company they work for. And first of all, the company you work for is right alongside anyway, and you've only got 220 characters here, so why waste it? And your job title is further down. But then who cares really what your job title is? People are more interested in the benefits you can bring. Um, LinkedIn is a marketing resource. And um, the biggest mistake I find that people make in marketing is they tell people what they do. And nobody gives two hoots what we do. They care passionately how we can help them. So I think certainly the about section and particularly the headline should be full of this is a benefit I can bring. This is the benefit you will get from working with me. So 220 characters. And I think the last time I counted mine there, it's about 217 characters, give or take. So that's the sort of amount you're playing with. And it needs to contain two bits of important information. It needs to contain obviously to the sort of things that you do. But most importantly, it needs to contain the benefit you bring. And it's important for a number of reasons. And we're going to look at searching a bit later in the session. Um, but certainly when somebody is searching for, let's say somebody's searching for a LinkedIn trainer. And when you'll see later, when we use a search function, um, you will get 10 or 12 people on a page. And all you will see is effectively their picture, their name and the headline. So if you see 10 or 12 people on the page that says LinkedIn trainer, LinkedIn trainer, LinkedIn trainer, and then you come to one that says helping businesses generate more hot leads and sales, LinkedIn trainer, LinkedIn trainer, LinkedIn trainer, who are you more likely to click on first? One that's and so therefore it, it makes it more likely that people are going to click on your profile as one of your, instead of one of your competitors. And that's really what your headline is all about. And as I, say, as I said, if you need further convincing, how many emails a day do we delete on the subject title alone? Yeah. Um, I know that I think Phil mentioned the stars. Um, I think the stars is nice. It tends to break it up. Um, it makes it stand out. And here's a little thing, although we're not talking about the name today. Um, one of my pet hates on LinkedIn is people who send automated messages on LinkedIn because there's absolutely no need for it. If you know what you're doing, and certainly people that work with me on my training and coaching programs, I gave them a little semi-automated system, which means you can send out 10 requests a day, and we'll see about that later. You can send out 10 requests a day by spending no more than five minutes. You'll be amazed the number of incoming LinkedIn connection requests that say, hire star. Hmm as opposed to high in because they're square hasn't been able to differentiate from the first character. And then it goes on to say something like, hi, your star, we have read your profile with great interest. <laughs> no, you haven't. You've sent the same blooming message to 800 other people at the same time with the press of a button. So that's just a little thing. So the stars are there to, to, to help stand out. But the two bits of information, really important, benefit you bring, I help people with business businesses generate more hot leads and sales, and then some of the other stuff I do about a keynote speaker, being LinkedIn training and coach, etc. So the headline is to bring people to your page as opposed to your competitors. Then obviously you want to keep them there. So um, the next important section or the equally important se section here is the about section. And before I open this out, again, there's a thing to see more here. So again, make sure your first two or three lines are really uh, make an impact. You know, in the old days when you didn't used to have this function, people used to say, thank you, look at my profile, you know, da, 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 I'm a dad, I've got two kids and all that sort of stuff. All the goods, they might not even press to see more. So I help businesses generate more hot leads and da, 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 da. So in other words, make those first two or three lines really impactful. And then opening it up, you have 2,000 characters. And give or take, that's 2,000 characters. So, again, you can see the amount of content that you can get in there. And it's quite a lot. You'll see I left a bit about being a keen golfer down the bottom of the stone. Um, if people's, people's profiles will be different. As you can see from up, up, up the top of my profile, I juggle a few different balls. 
So I've got a section here on my uh, sales and sales training with. I've got a section here on the work I do, training school governors and, 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 and school governing boards. And then in the middle here, I've got the section on LinkedIn. Now, again, we've only got 15 minutes, give or take. So I'm only going to just pick up a couple of things that are, well, I think to be really, really important. Um, when I do workshops and stuff, we probably spend three quarters of an hour on this section alone. Um, the important here, again, is nowhere in here am I talking about what I do as such. It's all about benefits again. I know you've come across the parade with them, with and with them, W-I-I-F-T and W-I-I-F-M. Whenever you're writing something, you need to be thinking, what's in it for them? When we are reading stuff, we are thinking, what's in it for me? And so don't tell people what you do. Tell people the benefits you bring. And again, there's a lot of psychological language in this section, which I'm not going to go into now. We haven't got time to. But all I would say is tell people stuff they may not know. There are 25 million LinkedIn profiles in the UK alone, and yet it remains a massively underused marketing resource. I didn't know that. I thought it was a place to dump my CV and hopefully a recruiter will find me. Yeah. Um, you know, you need important you need, you now need a good LinkedIn presence. Didn't I didn't realize that. Okay, fine. There may be more to this than I realize. Maybe I do need to speak to this guy. Um, I can help with this using a variety of delivery models to suit your availability, budget, and learning style. Again, you're taking objections away. You know, you know people's not going to sit and think about this thinking this is gonna be really expensive. You're already taking objections away that they may have which will make your business more successful by attracting and engaging with better quality prospects and key people in your market, increasing your visible credibility, making even more sales. Who in business is not going to want any of those three things? Yeah. So again, that's just a quick, uh, a quick light touch on the about section. Um, always, always touch, put, put down the sort of people you're looking to connect with. There's a thing called your RAS, and you ever come across your RAS, your reticular activating system. It's where your conscious mind meets your unconscious mind. People tend to speed read, and they'll get down here somewhere, and they'll say, hang on a second, I'm a sales leader, a business owner. There's something back about me that I need to go back and read it. So, again, always put in there the sort of people you're looking to connect with. Uh, and finally, the last bit on here is please contact me now to arrange a 350-minute LinkedIn review. Um, again, when I do longer sessions on marketing, I, we talk about the difference between sales and marketing. And if I had 30 people in a room and asked them all for their definition of marketing, I'd probably get 30 different answers. So my, my definition for its worth is anything and everything that you do that gets to a one-to-one -one conversation is marketing. Once you get to the one-to-one -one conversation, you're into business and development and sales, which is a totally different skill set. So again, your LinkedIn and all the other marketing you do is getting to one-to-one -one conversation, whether it's Zoom, coffee, beer, whatever it might be. So again, but please contact me now to arrange a free 50 minute link, LinkedIn review. People like things for free. They'll pick the phone and say, can I have a review? And I've got them on the phone. I can then talk to them about how good, bad or indifferent their, their profile is. But that's the first tip. First tip is get people to your page by getting the headline right and then keep them there and keep them interested by getting the about section right. That's brilliant, Ian. thank you. Just Sorry, to Pim. interject there, you know, if we look at this, um, and I'm a big believer in LinkedIn. I'm a big believer in in anything that lets me connect with people that I don't know um, from a professional sense. Um, this is like a shop front, right? Basically for yourself, but also for your business. If you're running a business, you're able to put up here, you know, things that will get you noticed, get, get your attention and then have that in front of the right people. And I think um, this probably came from you, Ian. I think it definitely came from you is that CEOs deal with their own LinkedIn, right? You don't have gatekeepers yep. on LinkedIn. You have, you know, you're reaching out to individual people, which I think is a, a really interesting thing to think about um, compared to picking up a phone and doing a load of cold, for example. It is. I mean, <clears throat> to make just out of interest, I went to um, two or three years ago, pre-COVID, I went to a big local networking event run by a big local uh, firm of solicitors and the managing director, and they've got 20 or 30 branches around the West Midlands. And the managing director was there and I was chatting to him and a couple of other people at networking event. And to be fair, there was a lot of skepticism about LinkedIn. People always trying to sell stuff. And what they do, it's what we do. Uh, and this, that and the other. And it's a recruitment tool. Yes, it is. But again, it's what we do. And I turned to this manager director and I said, we've never met before. What happens if I were to run you up this morning and says, um, can I have an appointment or can I speak to you? Um, and he said, you wouldn't have got through. He said, proudly, he said, I have people that protect be from people like you <laughs> which i thought was quite clever uh i said fine get that i said what happens if i send you an email he said i only read about five percent of the emails that i receive that come in with my name on i said what happens if i send you a linkedin message he said i read all my linkedin messages 
So as yeah. Tim rightly says, you can get past gatekeepers and that they don't even exist on LinkedIn. You can get straight through to key decision makers. That's great, Ian. Some really practical advice there about the profile and the about section and so on. Your second tip was around finding, connecting and engaging with the right people. Tell us more about that, please. OK, so um, the more connections you've got, the more um, the more you're, you're accepted as being knowledgeable and a user of LinkedIn. So the first thing to look out for is anybody that's got a 500 plus uh, up here for 500 plus connections. That's almost like a tick in the box that you are a credible um, LinkedIn user. Um, the amount of followers you have got and the amount of actually first tier connections you've got um, are generally speaking within a couple of percent of the same. So I've got nearly 10,000 first tier connections. Uh, for a quick explanation on first and second tier connections for those those that don't know, I know I am connected to all you guys actually directly as first tier connections. But if I work my way, let's presume that we were, and let's just say I was connected to Phil, and Phil and I were first tier connections, and let's say Phil was connected to Tim, but Tim wasn't a direct connection of mine. Phil would be first tier connection, Tim would be second tier connections, and we carry on down, James would be a third tier connection. Mm -hmm. So I have something like nearly 10,000 first tier connections, which gives me over 3 million second tier connections. And that becomes really important then when you are using the search function, which we're about to look at because um, you have a much bigger pond to go fishing in. The other thing that I think is really important to make here is, and this is something that LinkedIn doesn't share very often, or, or, or if at all, is the fact that um, you, when we look at the third tip, which is going to be around posts and articles, um, only a small percentage, LinkedIn doesn't let on what the percentage is, but we believe it to be around 10%. Mm -hmm. Only 10% of your first tier connections will actually see any post or article you send out. So in my particular case, I've got 10,000 first tier connections, which means approximately 1,000 people will see any post or article I put out. If you relative beginner on LinkedIn and you've only got 200 connections for example then only about 20 people will see your post and article so again that's another good reason why it's important to to, to constantly and in, in keep um increasing your connections and there's a very simple way to do it and this is how we do it um let's say for example and by the way everything i'm showing you today is on the um free pack is, is on the free platform not, i'm not on premium in any way shape or form and as i do a lot of work on um on LinkedIn, and, I'm, and effectively, I'm not on premium platform. That says a lot about the amount of stuff you can actually do on the free platform. So let's say, for example, I was searching for marketing directors, for example. So we'll type in marketing director. Always singular, because everybody else put, nobody puts themselves down as a marketing directors, marketing director. And secondly, the thing is, um, if you're using two words, always put it in inverted commas. It's something to do with Boolean searching, which I won't bore you with now. So click on marketing director and then click on people. 907,000. How many, how many do you want? <laughs> um, so again, that's how you find the people. Now, again, let's, for example, and, now, and, and, and these, these, these filters are all free. So you can search by first and second tier connections. You can search on geographical locations. And if you're trying to find a particular in this particular guy here is market director with Bluebird. So if I was trying to find the market director and didn't know his name of Bluebird IT Solutions, I can go into here, type in the name of the company, I can find the guy. And then you know who to ring up and ask me. But you wouldn't bother ringing up and ask you to send them a LinkedIn message. So let's say, for example, we want to narrow it down a bit. And let's say, for example, we narrow it down to the United Kingdom. And now we've got 76,000. And let's say I'm local to Birmingham. So let me just tie You probably wouldn't have guessed from my accent, but there you go. Um, yeah, we can't put black country, unfortunately, but that's another story. Uh, so if I put Birmingham, for example, 990 marketing directors in the Birmingham area, how much would it cost you to buy a list of 990 marketing directors in the greater Birmingham area and by the time you've got that data through, half it's probably out of date anyway. Yeah. Um, and so this is where, and again, this is whereby I said early on, the more first tier connections, the more second tier connections you've got, the bigger numbers these will be. If you're a, a relative beginner on LinkedIn and you've only got a couple of hundred connections at all, you will get nowhere near these numbers. 
So again, when I work with people, I give them a little semi-automated tool, which means they can send up to 10 connection requests a day uh, to all the, so the first 10 people, they could click on there, press connect, little semi-automated tool, which personalizes it to make sure there's no stars, no nothing, it's all, it's all nice and cute. Um, and just do 10 a day, five minutes, 10 a day. You send 50 connection requests out a week, and let's say only half of those people connect with you, that's 25. Let's say only half of those people respond to your follow-up message, that's 12. Let's say only half of those people say, Ian, I'd love to have a one-to-one -one conversation with you, that's six. Now you, me, or anybody that wants to has got six one-to-one -one conversations next week that they didn't have this week, and the week after, and the week after, and the week after that, all by spending five minutes a day. Yeah, great, Ian. Just one thing I'm going to ask you, a very specific thing. I see all, all these results are showing second-tier connections. So does it, yep. does, it, does it extract first-tier connections? When you no, first-tier connections could be in there. It's a bit unusual. There's, no, there's a bit unusual actually no um, first-tier connections on there. But if I put first-tier connections on there, then I've got okay. 28 of them. It, it was just the back there. Obviously, they were obviously further down the page. Yeah, okay. But, but you know, second tier connections, and all, all I would be doing is to look up, send them a message saying, I mean, that's in, on the other list. Hi, Jack. Hi, Bill. Whatever your name is, I'm looking to connect with savvy market directors in the Birmingham area. Came and got your profile. Love to connect. We hope you don't mind. Yeah. Um, I think it's really important that we personalise messages. Um, a, it's a nice thing to do. Um, B, I know people that won't accept connection requests and uh, unless they've um, yeah. unless you've actually personalised it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. One the of the things I also do here's a little here's a little tip. Sorry, here's a little tip. I also whenever I go to networking events and I collect people's business cards, I always afterwards straight up and send them a connection request and just say, Hi, it was great to meet you at the XYZ networking event this morning. Why don't we connect and maybe we can help each other out sometime? That served apart from the apart from the benefits I've just already spoken about. If we if we, I didn't speak to that person for another couple of years, you can see in the very first start of the messages where we first met. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Tim. Sorry, and one yeah. thing you can do is if you look at your connections, you can see when you connected. So you can yeah. go back to people and say, we met five years ago when you were yeah. and I was at, and that's a really good yeah. way of, of putting that together. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's that's kind of leading on to what I was going to say, Philip, is um, what's powerful about LinkedIn is that they're all people. And I know that sounds like an odd thing to say, but your point on personalization is really about them being people. People want... To be connected with right they don't want to um don't, they don't want to be attacked by an automated bot that picks out the star and not the fact that you're actually your name is ian preston um and they want sure. that human connection i found this really powerful over covid actually during lockdown is you know i was at home um with my kids and my wife which was great but also my mother-in-law uh so i needed an escape and one of my escapes was um i connected with I made an effort to every week have a minimum of three virtual coffees with people I just met on LinkedIn. Um, and that was everything from old colleagues at new jobs, old colleagues at old jobs to people I thought were interesting. And you know what? Probably 75% of the time people are like, yeah, love to, you know, 30 minute virtual coffee doesn't really cost you anything. And obviously as long as they can see some kind of benefit to that conversation, are you in the right space? I think most people will accept that. Um, and you're getting through to them not to some form of gatekeeper, whatever that might be, whether it's the delete button on your email or or anything. So I find it an incredibly powerful tool. And I think, um, mm. sorry, I, just to finish off my thought is, if I was, I am a small business, but as a small business, without huge budgets for marketing and, and other things, as Ian says, the ability to get access to a significant source of people that you can reach out to in a way that's not sort of invasive, um, I think is an incredibly powerful tool. And we found it as Blue Chip, we find it very powerful as a way to get our message out there, but also to reach out to prospects mm. and engage with them. Just okay. to round off those first couple of uh, couple of uh, um, tips, just going on to that thing where I said you can get six one-to-ones next week they didn't have this week. Um, I don't know a better way you can get that quickly to six one-to-ones, uh, any other way to do it. Secondly, if you, and if... You should be able to get at least one bit of business from six one to one. Let's be, if you can't, maybe we need to have a chat about your sales skills as well, or people's sales yeah. skills as well, because there's uh, there's, there's things. There. But the other thing, that before we move on to posts and articles, the really important thing that overrides all this is it's now good having all this great stuff to find, connect, and engage people if your profile is in poor order. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Yeah. So your profile needs to be engaged and it needs to have pictures. You'll see over mine when I go there, I'm not going to do it now, but there's, there's videos all over mine, there's pictures, there's articles I've had from magazines that I've been that, 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 that have used my stuff. You know, all the way through this your LinkedIn profile needs to do three things. It needs to get you found, give value, and prove your credibility. And if I'm a public speaker or I, you know, do this sort of stuff and there's pictures of me actually doing it, then again, that's where some of the credibility comes from. Really good point. Thank you. So let's move on to posts and articles, Ian, please. Okay. So posts and articles. Um, posts is LinkedIn speak for what we call the Facebooky stuff. Uh, articles is LinkedIn speak for what we call blog posts, five or 600 words. Um, so let's look at the difference. Um, so it's all under here, activities. Um, easy enough to create a post. Just click on create a post. Type in what you ever want to do. Click on always post pictures. I always think they stand out with pictures. Uh, you know, whether they're little cartoons. One of the things I I find very very useful. And as if we go into my um, let's just look, 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 let's see what it was for last week. Um, so here was a, here was an event I went to last week. Friday morning. Um, and I just I just took a picture and I name dropped a few people there. Generally speaking, I get um, I get about a thousand views in 24, 48 hours of me putting a post out. That's because I've got so many again. That's another great reason for having a lots and lots of connections. Because um, you think about it, thousand people, nobody's going to buy from you and I when we want them to buy. Whatever our product or service is, they're going to buy when they are ready to buy the product or service that we provide. And part of the art of marketing is to keep our name in the frame so that when that person, somebody over there, wants what we do, they think of us first. And putting, out, putting posts out consistently, maybe two or three a week, is a real good way of doing it. So I put a post out, a thousand people view it. That means for five minutes work, because I always go into a, a room where I am, take a couple of pictures, sit down quietly at the corner, send it all off, do it all, and then I can participate in the meeting. So for five minutes work at the start of the meeting, a thousand people give or tame, I have it in their consciousness. That again, has to be a really good use of your time. Um, so I tend to either write my own or I, let me show all my posts, or comment and share other people's um and that can be about different things that's about networking events uh that was a different networking event i was in um early in the week so they, i mean there's a classic example this was i think this was wednesday last week it's had a thousand impressions it's had a thousand views just by spending five minutes to take a video and dropping a couple of words in um also like sharing other people's um so again i would try and put post out when people thank me, I think that, you know, send recommendations. We're not talking about recommendations today, but recommendations on LinkedIn are really important. You know, if you, again, going back to that searching function, if you narrow it down to two people that you think can help you with LinkedIn or some sales training, and one guy over here says, I'm great at this, and they've got no connections or no recommendations, and I'm standing over here saying, I'm pretty good at this as well, but I've got 170 recommendations. Are you going to call Ghostbusters? So again, it's, it's really important. And, but I always thank them. So when they come, I always look drop a little thank you in, and just I name drop them as well because I think it's a nice thing to do. And again, it's another post, and that's had five hundred and fifty give or take views. So again, there's like people quite often say to me, I can't think what to write. Well, they're just not trying hard enough because there's so many things that you can put two or three lines around. So that's that's posts. Um, two or three of your own each week, if you can, and, and it, as well as liking, sharing, and commenting on other people's. Um, where are we gone? Articles. Articles, as I said are early on, are five or six hundred words blog post around stuff that might be of interest to your marketplace, and will help project you as being the go-to guy or the go-to girl in your mark in your particular marketplace. So again, because I do a number of different things, I'm fortunate I can write about different things. So that one is about strange love, how to increase your visibility and engagement on LinkedIn, which is exactly what we're just talking about now, posts and engage, posts and, 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 um, and articles. Um, there's one about selling is simple, but it's not easy. It's a great frustration of mine that people go into business and don't know how to sell. They think the business will come flying over the wall and land in the lap. I'm sure they're very, very good at doing what they do or making what they make. 
But if you can't convert people, if you don't know what to say when somebody says no, or how to prevent a no in the first place, or what to say when somebody says it's too expensive and the answer is never, I'll do it cheaper. If you're one of those people, then effectively you need to be able to sell. So again, that's an article about selling, how to make the best of online networking, why would you want a business coach? Da, 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 da. You can see all the different things. And I try and do one um, about one a month. I think that's a sort of right. And again, you haven't got to reinvent the wheel. If you've got these already on your web page and just pull them across and stick them onto your um onto your LinkedIn. Um, dead easy to do. Let's just go to home. Let's go to write an article. In this particular case, I'm due to my, uh, my own name rather than company name. And then effectively type in your headline, put a picture in, write some words. I always write the words up on Word first so I can change it around and slice and dice it and do a letter count and check my spelling and all that sort of stuff and then copy and paste it in. And so that, I think, is, um, you know, from a, uh, from a uh, top, top tip point of view, um, Post regularly, two or three times a week. Stick articles on there at least once a month. Um, mention people that you want to see specifically. Thank people who organise the event, because, again, it's, like, it's, it's a nice thing to do, because they're probably getting up their time for free. It's a nice thing to, to thank them. So there's a bit of a kudos thing going on. Also, the fact that, as I said earlier, if only 10% of your people or connections are actually seeing these things, then you, if you want specifically somebody to see them, then you need to name drop them. So it actually physically then comes into their notifications i think that's and well uh, within and well hang on sorry i was just gonna say i think that's you know some of this stuff is is the very simple stuff that feels very hard but is actually really yeah. you know taking a picture of an event you're at or you know sometimes i've done it when i'm on the way to my way to london you know to a bunch of meetings and you just take a quick snapshot of the bridge as you head into london do you know what i mean and and you know looking forward to meeting xyz today yeah um, for example there's nothing rocket science behind that it's not like I have to have a marketing degree and a PR degree to do it. I'm just saying nope. what I'm doing. And I think that's the thing to remember is say what you're doing. If you want to write an article, maybe write it about what you do or something that's related to what you do. It doesn't have to be some incredibly insightful piece that, um, you know, will win a Nobel prize. It, it's just an article, right? So I think that's the thing to remember. I mean, it is. And I mean, and sometimes you don't know whether they're going to take off. And I went, I know, okay. I had a thousand on one of those. Some of them, I don't get so many. The most successful post I think I ever had was, I think I had 200,000 views. I had 200,000 views and, now you, and, and over 500 likes and comments. Now, you can't see the people who have just viewed you. But what you can do is see the people who liked and commented. And the particular one I'm talking about, I had a couple, two years, a couple of years apart. But the first one I did was to do with a company I used to work with that made me big, big, a big company FM market that made me redundant. So I didn't know them any favors at all. So I just put a little piece on about they they were talking about reorganization. So we all know what reorganization at this particular at least another company. Then. We all know what reorganization is this particular company. It's not going to be one of the 24 managing directors. Uh, there it's going to be it's going to be all the people at the coalface are going to suffer as per usual anyway i just stuck it out there and two weeks later all these when i come back after christmas all these people have viewed it now i couldn't say the people have viewed it but it's become a kicking ground for that particular company the fm business in general people are also name dropping other people just so and so so and so you'd be interested in this i have the same problem at this particular company and then all the people who are following that company saw it and they all started commenting now i ended up with 500 like 500 likes and comments and I went down the list and being brutal, I wasn't interested in plumbers, chippy, sparkies, but I was interested in managing directors, business owners, marketing directors, and that sort of thing. So I guess what? I went down the list and I sent off something like 200 connection requests that said something like, thank you very much for liking or thank you very much for commenting on my post about X, Y, and Z. Why don't we collect and maybe we can help you do that sometime? And I ended up with something like 200 connections in the space of a week. Yeah, that's, that's really good advice. And I think what you've reminded us is, is, is that LinkedIn is a, is a much more powerful tool than many people realise. We're out of time, so let me just thank you for your time this afternoon. Anybody who wants to talk to you can find you on LinkedIn, of course, um, and connect. Um, Tim, thanks for joining us and adding your insights as usual. And watch out for future videos in this in this series. Thank you again, Ian. Thank you, Tim. Thanks, Philip. Thanks, Ian. Cheers. Thank you.